Have you ever been the recipient of some weird neurotypical social cues? And you're like, what does that mean? And what am I supposed to do with it? Like the other day at the gym, this girl kept looking at me, like giving me like half a second of eye contact and then just ignoring me the rest of the time, not actually coming to talk to me. Like what, what does that even mean? It turns out from my EQ training, we know exactly what that means. Hi everyone, Paul Mikalev here from Autism from the Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So how can I say I know exactly what that weird little sideways glance making half a second of eye contact means from across the room? Well, I will admit that the first time it happened, I wasn't 100% sure. I was 100% sure it happened and I am very sensitive and I notice these things. Firstly, no one looks at me. It's <laughs> it's very obvious if anyone is willing to engage with me at all, it's very obvious. So that's something that I always notice. So when it happened the first time, I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I wonder what that means. Um, and I was a little bit confused. When it happened the second time, I had a little bit of time to process and I was much more sure of exactly what it meant and my options of what I could do in, in response to that if I wanted to. So the first question I had in my head is, was it accidental or was it deliberate? Because if it was deliberate, then it's a little bit confusing. Why would someone keep looking at me but not actually say hello? Like she could have easily said hello if she wanted to. But then if it's accidental, that's even more confusing. What does it mean if someone keeps accidentally looking at me? So before we get on to what we definitely do know about this situation, let's do a quick reality check of what we don't know and what we can't know. So for example, it might be tempting to think, oh, I wish I knew whether she was doing it on purpose or not. Like, is there any intention behind it or not? Or I might want to know, I wonder what's going through her head at the moment. What is she thinking? What is she intending with this subtle, weird form of communication? My first thought was, is she flirting with me? Is that what's going on here? How do I know if that's the case or not? There are four facts of this situation that are really important to bear in mind. Fact number one, I do not know the answer to any of those questions that I just posed. I don't know if it's deliberate. I don't know what she's thinking or feeling. I have absolutely no idea if it means she's flirting with me or not. Fact number two, there is no way for me to know a definite answer to any of those questions. It's not like I don't know at the moment, but I should follow these steps and find out. There are no steps that I can follow to find out, which means I have to make a choice as to how to respond without getting a clear answer to those questions. Fact number three, a lot of what goes on in our brains and in our bodies with emotions and our thoughts and feelings and all of that is completely unconscious. What that means is we might be aware of some of the things that we're thinking and feeling, but we are not aware of all of the things that we are thinking and feeling. Which means that if I asked her, did you look at me on purpose? there is absolutely no way to honestly answer that question accurately because she may think, no, it was an accident, but actually it wasn't an accident. It was an unconscious communication. So all of that is to say, not only do I not know and can't know the answer to these questions, but she doesn't know and can't know for certain all of the answers to these questions. So let me give you an example of how we can think, we can honestly think we believe something that's not actually true. So when I was studying engineering, for example, I was thinking I would like to be an engineer. That is something I really want. And so I spent five years of my life studying that. And then I put a lot of effort into job interviews and finding a good company that I wanted to work for and all of that kind of stuff to get what I thought I wanted at the time. However, it would have been more accurate to say that what I wanted was stability. I wanted a nice, stable, reasonably well-paying job that would help me have a family and support my wife and kids. 
I wanted recognition of my skills. I wanted to work on solving important problems. And so becoming an engineer sounded like what I wanted, whereas actually it was really just the means to get the deeper things that I wanted. So sometimes we can honestly believe that we think a certain thing or want a certain thing, but actually our unconscious has a deeper motive that we're not aware of. So fact number four, and we've already kind of alluded to this already, is that it actually doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was on purpose. It doesn't matter what she was thinking at the time. It doesn't matter if she's actually flirting with me or not. None of those things are actually relevant for me deciding how to respond to this situation. So that's what we don't know and what we can't know. But there is one thing that I can know about this situation with near absolute certainty. The very simple meaning of this very subtle neurotypical social cue. She was essentially saying, I'm open and interested to interact with you in some way, shape or form that has yet to be decided yet. And if you weren't familiar with common neurotypical ways of communicating, you might think something like, well, if she wanted to communicate and interact with me, why didn't she just say hello? She could have just said hello. Why these weird little sideways glances? And the answer is because the weird little sideways glance is sending me a message. It is actually an invitation and I can either pick up that invitation or not. And if I choose not to, then she'll go away thinking, oh, well, he just wasn't interested in talking to me which is extremely frustrating if you didn't pick up on that message that was sent so subtly. So now we've realized two additional more useful facts in this situation. Fact number one, she's interested to interact with me in some way. Fact number two, if I don't initiate it, nothing's going to happen. So what did I do? I used the location occasion trick of how to initiate an interaction and I made a relevant, relatable comment about something we were both experiencing in the situation. And as you may have predicted by this stage, the response from her, on her side was extremely positive. We already knew with almost certainty that she was interested to interact. I responded positively to that invitation by initiating some kind of interaction. Therefore, she also responded very positively to my comment. In fact, for the rest of our time there, we shared a couple of positive back and forth little things. We had a polite goodbye, and that was basically the end of that interaction. Fantastic. A successful, positive, genuine, interesting little interaction that happened reasonably organically without too much effort on either of our parts. But it all came down to, number one, did I notice the weird, subtle NT social cue? And did I know what to do next to respond positively to that invitation. And you'll notice we still don't have an answer to any of those unanswerable questions that we had earlier. We still don't know if the little glances were intentional on her part or not. We still have no idea what she was thinking, if anything, during that time. And we still have absolutely no idea if she was open or interested for that little spark to be the start of an ongoing kind of relationship. But again, it helps to know what we don't know. So let's look at a different hypothetical example of if I was interested in starting a relationship with her. I still have no idea what she wants at this stage, so the only way is to test and see what she responds positively to. So for example, if I wanted to try and stay in contact and arrange to see her again, I could have done things like ask her name or ask if she comes here very often or ask when she's likely to be in here next or say when I'm likely to be in here next and suggest that maybe we can bump into each other again at a similar situation. And if the response to all those is quite positive, then we might even make a time, say, great, well, I will see you here next weekend then. Maybe I can even suggest to exchange numbers. And you can see with all of those questions that I outlined before, you can see it's slowly testing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more until we get to, oh, we have each other's numbers and we've kind of arranged to meet each other at the same time next weekend. And in that hypothetical scenario, what do we now know? The only thing we know is that she's interested and willing to stay in contact and see each other again next weekend. Anything more than that is pure speculation. 
So anyway, the main element of the strategy that I've outlined here is to clearly distinguish between what we do know and what we don't know. What we do know is based on some direct evidence that we've observed, and what we don't know is either probably not that important for right now, or is an opportunity to step up the relationship by a tiny little step to test if the other person is open and positive with this next level. You'll also notice that none of this involves masking, none of this involves a script of this is what I should say or shouldn't say. Instead, it's based on an authentic understanding of the social dynamic that's happening so that it empowers me with a choice of do I want to make a tiny little step to increase this relationship or like actually happened, I was just saying, yeah, this has been nice, polite goodbye and we may or may not ever see each other again. Also fine. So authentic social skills combined with a practiced awareness through emotional intelligence training suddenly open up any number of opportunities, like the example we've just been discussing. So I really hope that has made sense and has been valuable to you as a bit of an interesting uh, example and anecdote. I'll be interested to hear if this resonated for you or if there are other weird social cues that you've noticed uh, that you have figured out what they actually mean and how to respond to them. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and I will see you again next week. Bye.